Hello, welcome to my sixth course on how to build a geothermal greenhouse in your backyard. I'm Alex Smith, host of Radio EcoShock. You can find that at ecoshock.org. In this session, I will use photos and videos about the electrical system I use in my demonstration greenhouse in British Columbia, Canada. A previous video showed the electric line coming in underground from our home. Now I will take you through the main circuit breaker box, the waterproof wiring, and a kind of basic computer made out of switches and common wiring to run the greenhouse automatically. I will also discuss the geothermal fan and automated greenhouse venting. First let me say I am not an electrician. I am not offering you professional advice. The wiring you will see was mostly done by me, but every step was at the direction of a retired professional electrician, a friend of mine. If you are not experienced in wiring, I advise you to at least get professional advice or study up very hard. If you can afford it, get an electrician to do it. Safe wiring is especially important in a greenhouse where there may be water flying around or misters operating. There will also be high power grow lights that use a lot of electricity. The single biggest reason the old underground grow ops caught fire and burned down was due to crazy poor wiring running all over the place in a wet atmosphere. Even in YouTube videos from greenhouse operators I do respect highly, I still see a tangle of indoor rated extension cords and open plugs where water might go. Spend money to get your wiring done right. Starting from the underground cable, wiring approved for underground use that is, we put armored wiring, the kind with spiral metal all around it, up to the main box. We had a free 30 amp circuit, amps are the measure of the strength of the current, that was available in our house. That house circuit was wired into a ground fault interruption called GFCI. If there is a major short circuit in the greenhouse, the home circuit breaker would switch off. It's a safety feature. I looked for a 30 amp electric box locally, but there were none. I could order one in, but it would cost about twice what a standard 100 amp box costs. And that's why you can find a 100 amp box in my greenhouse. It turned out well actually, because in the end we used six circuits. I bought six circuit breakers because they don't come with the bare box. The whole setup cost less than $200 American. Then we ran armored and waterproof wire called Tech Cable along the sides of the greenhouse. I did that because I was fearing that water would hit the wires, but looking back, that is over the top. Tech cable is too expensive. Much cheaper metal armored wire is more common and it's fine for this job. There are four plugs on each side of the greenhouse at about waist height under the windows. You need a lot of plugs. In the videos I show you a couple of varieties of waterproof plug covers, but I found most of them do not leave room to directly plug in things like timers. So I end up plugging in short extension cords with a three outlet head, which negated the waterproof thing. The simple flip up water protection covers work the best. When buying, take any large plug used to charge things with you and see if you can get it into the outlet with that cover. We mounted a single simple light bulb inside over the greenhouse door. There is generally lots of light in the greenhouse in the hours that you want to be there. It comes in from the windows or it comes from grow lights. But sometimes you need to check something at night so I put in one light like that. We installed an outlet on the north wall where I knew my automated vent would be. We want to draw in cool north air during the summer especially. So we ran a wire also up to the south peak where my automatic fan would be mounted to catch the hottest air in the greenhouse and throw it out. I'll have more on those in a minute. 
There will be times when you are away or just don't notice that heat or cold is killing off your plants. This can happen in hours. The geothermal greenhouse should have some independence. But I don't trust the hardware or the software on those computer-like greenhouse automation systems, probably with Wi-Fi and costing quite a bit of money. A lot of consumer-grade electronics cannot withstand the high heat, cold, or humidity that happen in a greenhouse. The basis of my whole control system is temperature. We could add humidity control later, but temperature is what helps plants grow or stunts them for a while or outright kills them. So I bought a good quality mechanical temperature control gauge. It does not need electricity to function. It's not sensitive to high humidity. It works in heat or cold. It's designed for greenhouses. The model I bought is made by a company called PECO, P-E-C-O. It has been superb. PECO offers two models, a single mode and a double mode. The single model can turn on something either when the temperature gets too hot or too cold, but the double model allows you to set both a high and a cold temperature. Get the double one, although I've been using the single one that I bought kind of by mistake. But what will this thermostat turn on? You may want several things to come on at once, or depending on the season, you may just want the geothermal fan to come on and not the greenhouse vent fan. That would be the case in winter where we don't want cold air coming in from outside but we do want heat from the geothermal system. In other seasons we may want both to run. So my electrician friend and I created a Frankenstein made with five switches. These allow levels of automation doing what I just described. You may be able to think of something simpler this one was dirt cheap to make if we don't count the labor provided by a friend experienced in wiring things up. It has been working very well during heat over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees C and when it was minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit which is 37 degrees C minus 37. I can relax about the greenhouse when I am away from home. I don't want to get into details here about operating the geothermal fan. Let's just cover the electrical angle. The fan draws less than half an amp, which is not a lot of power. It's cheap to run, even full time. My hydro farm fan, hydro farm, is six inches, but it's not variable speed. So when you give it power, it just blows hard and sounds really loud. However, this fan can be made variable, and not all fans can operate with variable power, so buyer beware. I bought a variable speed fan controller from Active Air, and it works great, and it costs very little to buy. All the equipment I talk about here has worked without any problem for three years, at times driven hard under extreme conditions. An electric wire comes from the switching computer running overhead along a roof beam over to a dedicated outlet beside the geothermal fan. Only the fan will be plugged into this outlet. The small switches inside the mechanical computer cannot handle things like a 1500 watt space heater. The switching computer is made to control small motors and not big grow lights. I use other timers for those sort of things. The geothermal fan plugs into the variable speed controller which is plugged into a wall outlet. I find the medium speed is fine and that makes the noise quite bearable to work in the greenhouse. Or I can even run it on low while I'm in there. Also, we do not know the exact exchange rate of the pipe system underground. Will it take a few minutes for the heat to transfer to the pipes? Perhaps full speed is trying to draw too much air too fast anyway. I'm not sure about that. I also tried an intermittent timer, turning the geofan on for a few minutes and then off for a rest period of a couple of minutes so the underground system could recharge. You can daisy chain such controllers. The intermittent controller can turn power on and off while the variable speed instrument controls the fan speed. 
I find that running the fan on medium speed constantly still delivers a flow of air at the temperature I expect to find in the ground for that season. In my opinion, with my system at least, the intermittent controller was not needed for this task. Okay, one geofan detail. You will notice I mounted my fan in such a way that it can be turned over to run in either direction. When I first turned the fan on, blowing up, coming up out of the pipes after construction, it drew up very wet air, including water droplets that I feared might damage the fan. So I turned it over to blow down into the pipes instead, reversing the system. Figuring the initial water was just coming out of a new system in the ground, I ran it blowing down for a week. And indeed, that dried out the pipes underground. Then I flipped the fan back so it pulled air up from below and into the greenhouse. I find it moves much more air when pulling it up than laboring hard to push air down into those pipes. Be prepared for a break-in period and make it set so your fan can be reversed if needed. The greenhouse exhaust fan, that's critical. Sure, I could open a window, but I'm not always there. By the way, stray cats have come in through my open windows, which are near ground level after all, but they didn't do any damage. I guess I should have had screens on there. I don't think you can run a summer greenhouse with any confidence without an exhaust fan. My 12 inch or 30 centimeter commercial quality fan is made by J&D Manufacturing, so that's J ampersand D Manufacturing. It does an excellent job. With the proper intake vent, this fan will change the greenhouse air totally in a few minutes. The fan comes with protective metal blinds that only open when the fan is blowing, and that reduces the chance of rain or snow coming in. Yeah, those fan vents close automatically, but they are too leaky to leave open in the depths of winter. I cover over that vent with a piece of plywood around the end of November, and I do the same with the intake vent, which is also leaky during extreme cold weather. The intake vent is also important. The intake must be larger than the fan. According to the manufacturer's specifications, my 12-inch fan needs an intake vent 16 inches square, or 40 centimeters. I bought both the fan and the intake vent as a package from the manufacturer for a pretty reasonable price. It was under $200, I remember. The intake also has a small motor that will open that vent on an electric signal. So there are wires from my switching computer to the plug for that vent motor. When the thermostat tells the exhaust fan to come on, the intake vent automatically opens at the same time. If you run a reasonably powerful fan with no intake vent, it will die sooner due to stress and overwork. I also have a switch that allows just the intake vent to open without the fan coming on. Let's go to the videos. Hi guys. Well, I'm starting to hook up the geothermal part of this. This is my very first time turning on this fan and getting any air out of the pipes. This first pipe that you're looking at comes from a wide row of pipes that are eight feet down in the ground. And as you can see, I've installed a little shutoff here that I can turn off the 8 foot level or turn it on. The other pipe is coming from the 6 foot level. It's in a smaller bed and again I've got a turn off. Just I want to be able to measure the different temperatures at the different depths or there may be times in the summer I'm thinking in particular where the 6 foot layer is too hot but I want cooling air I'll just draw it from the 8 foot level. So here we have a Hydro Farm 6 inch inline fan. It's running on its lowest setting. The noise is not too bad. Uh, I can certainly enjoy myself being in here and you can't hear it at all from outside which is another concern for sitting on the back porch in the summertime and I want to have this running. I've had this thermostat sitting on there 
It's currently right about zero, a little less than zero degrees outside. When I came into the greenhouse, it was about 45, 50 degrees in here. And I'm operating at Fahrenheit, as you can see. But this thing is currently at 52 degrees temperature coming out of the ground, or about 12 degrees C. So I'm thrilled. That's warm air coming out of the ground, and it's, uh, oops, it's a bit far away. It's sitting weird here, but now it's going to go away. Well, we won't worry about that right now. I'm going to get better temperature measuring devices and really do this a bit scientifically. And one thing about this fan that everybody will tell you online is that you really need the speed controller that can come with it. I think it's an extra 12 or 14 dollars or something, I can't really remember, but this puppy ordered that at the same time as the fan. It's from Active Air, and uh, what I'll do now is I'll turn it from low to high, and you can hear the difference in the sound. So that's off. That's full speed. That's pumping a lot of air. More air than I'll need most of the time. But, you never know. If I need it, I've got it. Now this plug, well, this will go right into a plug on the wall once I get my electricity installed. I haven't done that. It's just running off an extension cord from the house at the moment. Now the intakes for these, there's the intake for the 6 inch. It's low, down right around the floor where the air is going to be coldest. And uh, I will put some screening over it to keep any mice, spiders, beetles out of there. Uh, so I'll probably do something. I may even turn it so it comes upright so things don't get kicked into it. There is the pipe for the 8-foot bed. Same thing. Needs a screen, whatever. But uh, those are my intakes. So that's really what I got going here today. I had to do a little moving around to create this pipe up where I wanted it. I don't know if you've seen my very early videos. When we put the pipes in originally, this building was going to be a little bit bigger. Due to bylaws, I had to shrink it. I was lucky to get this pipe to come inside my footing at all. And also, it was kind of crazy with an excavator here. At 100 bucks an hour. I couldn't get everything just the way I wanted it. So if you have a chance to do this, maybe you'll be able to plan it out a little bit better and you won't have to make one of these snake pipe connections. And once I get up a certain part, uh, part with the um, ABS, that's 4 inch ABS piping, then I found that this device, which I got off Amazon, and I'll have a listing of it so you can find it, actually fits nicely into the ABS pipe and lets this 4 inch pipe come over the top of it so I didn't need to get an adapter at that point. It saves me the cost of an adapter. This 4 inch collapsible pipe is actually used and sold as people need it for dust collecting pipes for their shop but I notice it's the same sort of 4 inch flexible pipe that is used by RVs for their sewage lines, so you might be able to get it either way. I got it from Amazon. I bought a three foot length, cut it in half with just a simple cutting knife and a pair of pliers where the metal was. And yeah, and then here I've got a four inch clamp holding it on. That works fine. Uh, you can do that. And then this part is an adapter that you can and should buy, which takes it from the size for the 4 inch ABS connector to the size of this flexible piping, which is slightly smaller. I had a hard time getting this onto their proper size adapter. I can't imagine struggling to get it onto what's in here. So, about two of those adapters, highly recommend you do that. And then, as you can see, this is a Y piece that connects um, two 4-inch 
to a six inch opening and uh, in general I'm told that you don't really want to limit the air coming in or out of a fan and if you do it too much you can in fact damage your fan so it's good to have two four inches which would be like an eight inch coming into a six inch fan it's happy with that and on the exit here I may put a piece of piping coming up and if I do I may try and figure out a way to make it go from six to an eight inch maybe just a foot of stovepipe or something I don't want it to go too high I want the air to circulate down on the level where the plants will be so I think that even on a cold night this will pump out air that's well above freezing now I have to remember that when you look at the charts for these things 8 feet down it's 55 degrees in the summer and 45 degrees in the winter and that's true in Canada or Alabama it, it doesn't depend on your latitude that's just the way the ground works so there is a difference between summer and winter right now it's just the beginning of November so I'm still drawing out the shoulder of the temperature of summer so I expect come January or February that this output will drop from what is now 52, 52 Fahrenheit to maybe uh, 45 Fahrenheit still above freezing but not as warm as it's coming out on this first trial today I want to talk to you about installing this shutter vent it's been a bit of an adventure I've spent about half a day on it which is a fairly long time for this project but it's worth it and I have some innovations that they don't tell you about at the manufacturer that you can do that I think will help your geothermal greenhouse so this is a metal intake vent it came as a set with the vent the motor below that opens it and that 12 inch fan up above there it's all from JD manufacturing came as a package there in Eau Claire Wisconsin and you can find them on the net that's a 12 inch fan the smallest size they make it's kind of an industrial quality fan I'm quite pleased with the quality of it it also has a vent on it but there's no motor on the uh, fins of that vent it just blows open when the fan comes on but I want to talk to you about this one so it looks very well made this one it's got good aluminum work on it and the whole idea is you have a little motor down here and it has an arm on it and when it's wired up which it's not yet it will pull on this chain which will open the vents like that and they will only stay open as long as the power is running on the fan which is all set by thermostat which is a separate piece that you have to buy and then when the fan goes off and the power goes off the vent closes well that's all very good however there's real problems for a geothermal greenhouse in Canada or anywhere north of Texas that it can get cold out because I doubt you can see it in the video but there's actual daylight there visible on the sides of the fan blades or of the uh, blades that open up here for the vent and so that means a lot of cold air is going to come in around this thing so to mount it what I've done is I've made a frame out of two by twos that are attached to my half inch plywood wall and when I put the fan it's or when I put the vent itself in I put some of this butyl tape all around it so this is taped there's no air escaping coming in around the actual setting of the aluminum frame but I still have that problem there now you may ask yourself well, why did you buy a motorized fan and or, or a motorized vent and the reason is this is like the fire escape this is for the times in the summer when the greenhouse suddenly gets so hot I'm out kayaking the place is gonna just kill off the plants inside if it doesn't get a change of air quickly and that thermostat will click on the fan will come on this vent will open and clean the air out of here in about two minutes and exchange it and I've got my vent intake vent on the north side of the building in the shade 
where the air will be a little bit cooler but certainly it, it may be cooler air coming in than the very hot air that can build up in a greenhouse so I may not be using this vent a lot but it's there as the safety measure for the times when I'm not here and I need something automatically to air this place out and save my plants so to me that's worth it now I would like to put some insulation around this and some plastic around this for the winter. It's going to be a little bit difficult to do on the inside though. I've got this chain, which incidentally has come off here, but I'll put it on. And I've got a little arm sticking out, I've got a motor, there's no smooth surface to work with. And I don't want to just wall it in and then have to open it up. I suppose I could put a little door on it, frame it, put a door on it, and you open the door in the summertime. But I've chosen a different solution, and I'll show you why. Outside, that's a pretty squeaky door, but it's tight. Outside, I put this wooden frame around the intake vent. Now this frame serves several purposes. First of all, you'll notice that the fins on the intake vent are aluminum. Now aluminum is just a great heat transmitter and what will happen there is it will just take the heat from the greenhouse and act like a window. It'll just dissipate the heat straight from the greenhouse out into the outside. And geothermal is kind of a weak heat. It's not like you've got a blast furnace or a wood heater in there. So I can't afford to lose all the heat I will lose through that aluminum. So I definitely have to insulate that for the winter. And also because of those air holes that I talked to you about, I, I want to close those off too. So on the outside here, I will put a layer of plastic to seal the air, and then a layer of insulation, and then another piece of wood just to close this off for the winter. So I'll just put a square of wood over the whole thing to close it off for the winter and that's going to make that very tight and insulated and I won't have heat loss when it's 30 below outside. I'm Alex Smith, host of Radio EcoShock as broadcast on 100 radio stations in the United States, Canada, the UK and Australia. Thank you for listening and thank you for caring about our world.